All right, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about my bag gun setup. So bag guns are something that has been somewhat controversial in the gun community for a while now. In more recent years, it has been very, very destigmatized thanks to people like Lucas at T-Rex Arms who have you know, made a big push to normalize this kind of thing and to you know, get the point across that no matter where you go, if you're out in public, there's probably people carrying around you. And a lot of them may be carrying some more um, substantial firepower than just a handgun in something like this backpack. So uh, one point I do want to stress is be familiar with your state and local laws as far as what they do and don't allow. Because while every gun law is an infringement, and I do you know, believe that wholeheartedly, nobody wants to go to prison. So um, yeah, do your research and you know, take the things I'm about to tell you into consideration as far as you know, what type of bag you should choose and what type of gun you should carry and how it may or may not suit your needs. Because not every person and their needs are gonna be the same and not every backpack is going to be the same. So um, starting with the backpack itself, uh, something that Lucas from T-Rex Arms has also mentioned that I do agree with is that your backpack needs to be discreet. Now where I do uh, separate a little bit from his opinion is um, he and a lot of other people believe that uh, you should not go with name brand backpacks or name brand tactical backpacks such as this Vertex that I have here because they're too recognizable and people will know that you're carrying. In my opinion, as long as you get something with a more you know normal pattern or color on it and it's not multicam or uh, digital camo or something with molly covering the front of it, as long as it's something like this that just looks like a normal backpack, 99.9% .9 of people are never going to notice what brand it is. But again, that's just my opinion, and I'm not claiming that it is the end-all, be-all opinion. So if you are worried about somebody noticing that you're carrying uh, a bag gun, maybe you should go with something like a Jansport or an Adidas bag or something that's less noticeable. But in my opinion, it is really nice to have something that is purpose-built for carrying a carbine while also looking the part of a normal backpack. So uh, I'll get off my soapbox, but um, I'll say this backpack, which is the Vertex EDC Commuter 2.0, is a very good option if the uh, gun you're wanting to carry fits in it. And in my case, it obviously does. So starting off, it has three main compartments. The front compartment is a quick access where I store a extra magazine and a cat inside. So um, I think these are the first two items you should put into a backpack after the gun itself. An extra magazine and then something for bleeding control because you're not gonna get out of every gunfight unscathed and there may be other people who need assistance um, if a gunfight ensues. So uh, honestly, even one tourniquet in a lot of situations is not gonna be enough, but it's gonna be better than nothing. So that is the first compartment. The second compartment is just going to be for your personal everyday items, such as laptops, chargers, that kind of thing. Um, food, water, whatever else you want to carry in here. And this gets into the point of not every backpack is the same. So uh, this backpack carries more than enough for what I need, but this is not something that I would take on a, you know, a multi-day camping trip or hike in the woods, something where I'm going to need a lot more supplies. This is just a day-to-day -day backpack for carrying day-to-day -day things. So just a small little compartment for carrying, like I said, a laptop and just normal day-to-day -day essentials. The actual compartment for the firearm is housed in the back. So it has this extended pull tab on it. And with this being a single sling bag, you can have this on your back, reach around, grab this pull tab, rotate the backpack around to your front to where it'll be like this on your stomach. And if you're imagining the camera is your point of view, you'll rotate this around to where the backpack is on your front, either on your chest or abdomen or hanging lower on your stomach, depending on how tight you have the strap set. And then you'll pull the tab in the opposite direction to open the compartment for the gun. So this is my SIG Rattler 300 Blackout, which you guys have seen in previous videos. 
And just to show you, it is currently unloaded. Uh, this is, in my opinion, one of the better options for a small backpack gun. It's got a lot going for it. So the SIG Rattler is a very high quality, reliable firearm. It operates on a short stroke gas piston system. Um, in my experience, they are actually surprisingly accurate for how short the barrel is. And that does everything I need it to and nothing I don't. So as far as my current setup on here, I've got an Aimpoint T2 on a LaRue quick detach mount, and I've got a Surefire flashlight. So in the concept of keeping this gun as slim and low profile as possible, I've mounted the flashlight to the same side of the gun that the stock folds to, so that when the gun is stowed away, it's a uniform profile on this side. If I had the flashlight on the other side, it would have made more of a snag point and made the gun wider overall. So um, just something to consider with your bag gun. You don't want something that's gonna be too bulky and hard to get out of the bag. Um, as you can see, I am not currently running a suppressor on it. If I choose to, I can carry the suppressor in a different compartment, and if I have time, retrieve it and mount it to the gun. Though, having the gun this short and compact is really, really nice just for day-to-day -day carry. So, um, the biggest plus, I'd say, for the Rattler 300 Blackout over a, another popular carrying option, which would be a 9mm pistol caliber carbine, is just the fact that 300 Blackout has a lot more energy than nine millimeter and therefore is more effective at uh, stopping potential threats. So there are some effective, you know, nine millimeter loadings that I do trust. Um, Spear Gold Dot is one that comes to mind, but in the end, you're never gonna get close to the energy of a rifle caliber cartridge from a pistol caliber carbine. So uh, this is currently what I am carrying in the bag. My previous setup was actually this B&T APC-9. And this is also a very, very high quality firearm. I do trust this. Um, it's reliable, uh, easy to operate, and has all the capabilities I really would need out of a bag gun, but it falls short in terms of energy just being a nine millimeter. And this is kind of getting into a whole nother issue that has been developing over the past few years is the advancement of rifle caliber um, firearms that are the size of PCCs which somewhat invalidates PCCs themselves, because if you can carry a firearm that is the same size, has the same level of modularity and reliability, but has way more energy, or muzzle energy, why would you not carry it? So, um, but anyway, um, this is also another good option overall. Uh, I'm just gonna really quickly talk about the upsides and downsides. The biggest upside that this has going for it is that I can carry it with this suppressor mounted. This is a Silencer Co. Omega 9K. Um, and I have had really good luck with the suppressor over the years. I've kind of beat the hell out of it, but I've never had an issue with it. But with this being a much smaller suppressor than the Sig Sauer SRD 762, it is possible to carry this in the bag with the suppressor mounted. Now, a uh, quick side note, I could mount this to my SIG Rattler. It is rated for 300 blackout as well, and then I could fit that with a suppressor mounted. Um, but in my experience, these are not great at suppressing 300 blackout, especially supers. Um, but it is possible. But I also just didn't want to mess with taking off my quick detach suppressor mount on the Rattler and then having to switch stuff back and forth. Um, this is pretty much dedicated for this gun at this point. Now, going into the downsides, um, the APC-9 or any 9mm carbine, uh, you're not going to be able to fit a full 30 round magazine into this particular bag. It's just too long. These are actually quite a bit longer than a 30 round 5.56 or 300 blackout magazine. Um, even with this base pad taken off, um, they're quite a bit longer and they just don't work. You have to use either a 25 round magazine or a 20 rounder or smaller to carry it in the bag. So not only are you carrying something with significantly less energy per round, you're carrying less rounds in the gun, in the magazine, uh, ready to go. So, just something else to consider. Um, obviously I don't have an optic on this right now. Um, the T2 that was on it is actually on the Rattler now. If you've seen my previous video on the Wilcox Boss, um, I no longer have that optic. 
Um, so the T2 came off of this and went back on the Rattler. So I have another one on for this in route. So, yeah, that is um, pretty much the big downsides for this gun. Less energy, less mag capacity, and I prefer the controls of an AR-15 over this one. I don't really like this bolt release setup or the mag release on this. I prefer if it was just completely analogous to an AR, but that's getting really nitpicky. They're still awesome weapons. I still use this all the time for uh, competition shooting or just plinking at the range. Um, B&T makes an awesome pistol caliber carbine. It is just not my first choice for a bag gun in this case. So anyway, um, I think I've rambled on long enough. If you guys do have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments section below. Uh, one question that I know I will get is what kind of ammo am I carrying in this? And to answer that, I am carrying, this is Barnes 110 grain TTSX. So this is obviously a supersonic round and is a very well-known loading for uh, 300 Blackout as far as self-defense purposes go. Um, because I'm not running a suppressor, there's really no point in running subs in this. And I'd rather have the extra energy afforded by this round and the extra performance. So anyway, like I said, this is not the end-all be-all setup for a bag gun. This is just what I needed and what I prioritized. Um, if you need to carry more than this, you'll probably end up needing to get a bigger bag. Or if you need to carry a larger rifle, you'll need a larger bag. If you want to just carry a pistol and some extra magazines, you could probably go even smaller than this. So there's lots of things to consider. So if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.